So let's say you've identified a whole bunch of mushroom samples and now you actually want to culture them. What do you do? Well, there's three steps to actually culturing a mushroom. So step one, you're going to need one of two things, either one of these, which is a petri dish containing an agar gel, or one of these, which is a jar of growing medium. Now the major advantage of a petri dish is that you can see on the right, it's really easy to identify if you're growing the mushrooms. If you have contaminations, it's easy to pull them off. Now another major advantage of petri dishes is that we can also control the types of nutrients they're getting. So typically what we'll do is we'll grow the mushrooms in a dry malt extract agar. And this is a general purpose fungus food, works really well and grows just about any type of fungus you want. But let's say we want to prepare the mushrooms to grow in a more protein rich environment. Well in that case we can change the mixture to dry malt extract as well as spirulina powder. If we want to make them better, we're able at working with carbon rich sources. We can go with an activated carbon. And if we really hate the mushrooms, we can pick something that doesn't really grow fungus that well at all, potato starch dextrose. So we have a lot of advantages when working with a petri dish, but there is a major disadvantage in that we're not going to create a lot of mycelium. These are small petri dishes, and even if we switch to big ones, there's just not enough space for the mushroom roots to grow inside the agar. So we do have an alternative if we want to create large amounts of mycelium. Now, an alternative to the agar plates are liquid medias. In this case, dry malt extract dissolved in water. And a major advantage of this is when we create large amounts of mycelium or mushroom roots. The downside, though, is if we have any type of contamination we're gonna get a widespread growth. So when it comes to this, we typically see it in three stages. We see the media being added, we see the initial onset, and then we see the true growth of the mycelium within a week or so. Now in reality, you're gonna probably have to bounce back and forth between the two. So you use the petri dish to isolate the mushroom roots that you want, use the liquid media to create large amounts, or maybe you have to use two petri dishes, one to isolate the roots, but the second one to make sure it's just the roots, not the contamination. What we wanna to build to though is step two. And step two, this is called the stage two medium. The stage two medium is typically vermiculite, which is used to hold moisture in place with whatever we ultimately want to grow the mushroom on. So this can be grains, this can be coffee grains, this can be cardboard, it can be whatever we want as long as the mushroom is capable of processing. So if we take something like this, we squirt it in liquid medium, or we add the agar plates to it, we could end up with something that looks like this after three weeks. What happens after three weeks is the mycelium, the roots begin to take over the grain. And you can see where they pulled away from the jar, they begin to eat a lot of it up. And what we want to do is get the grains completely saturated. Because once the grains are completely saturated with mushroom roots, we can go to stage three. And stage three is either going to be our shotgun tub, which is this tub with the holes, a whole bunch of vermiculite in it, or an incubator. And once we're getting to stage three, we're to the point that we can actually now start growing the mushrooms and making them bloom underneath controlled conditions. And that's the three steps to growing your own mushrooms. Thank you.